Welcome to the Comox Valley Horticultural Society virtual open garden tour. Today we're at the home and beautiful property of Diane and Roland and they're in Ships Point and they have roses by, um, well, I've forgotten what that is, roses by Silverleaf. Are, they've got over, they've got 80 different varieties of roses on their property and over a hundred rose bushes. So it, it is a spectacular site. We just had a pre a uh, little bit of a tour and it's wonderful. Some wonderful roses and uh, we're gonna go back and have a look at what they've got. And uh, we've got a mi nice mix of, of course, the roses. And of course, Ships Point, I should probably mention, is sandwiched between Vancouver Island and Denman Island. So it gets the full effects of the Salish Sea, the moderating effects. Mm. So probably warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer. Uh, yeah, and actually it's also a little bit of a microclimate that uh, Fanny Bay uh, seems to get a little bit more um, moisture mm -hmm. than other places. And in winter time, um, you see Buckley Bay having snow on the ground, Qualicum Bay uh, having snow on the ground, Bowser, yeah. and there wouldn't be any snow here. Perfect. And so, anyway, it's one of these uh, microclimates. Microclimates, it works. And it works, obviously, because of what we're seeing in the gardens around us. And why don't we get started with your uh, lovely cage here and your, your garden. And tell us about your roses. And okay, um, what we have here is a, a new dawn, which is uh, very popular. It's uh, very uh, highly scented. It's a climber. And it'll eventually climb over uh, this... Uh, uh, pergola we built <coughs> last summer. The COVID project, yes. <laughs> yes, Indeed, uh, I think we've spring all COVID those. project. Yes. <coughs> um, long here we have um, a sunny skies. Um, it's a, a floribunda rose and you can see here <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Uh, it's a floribunda rose and you can see here it has all these uh, different buds uh, coming off the top of it. So this is a, a lovely uh, yellow rose. Its uh, leaves are nice, big, green, healthy, dark. It's uh, quite disease resistant and it uh, was introduced uh, in about 1970 or so. And they do have a, a number of old-fashioned roses as well, which uh, um, we'll showcase. Yeah. It's and um, here we have uh, love, and just a you know nice uh, colored rose. Uh, you can see that it uh, goes different, uh, pale, and then into uh, this uh, nice uh, red here. Uh, Morden Blush, um, it's a bush rose, um, it's developed in the a a Agriculture Canada Research uh, Centre at Morden, Manitoba, which has since closed down, and uh, they moved all the uh, work into the Vineland Station in Ontario. Mm. Good to have a rose to remember the research station then. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Okay, uh, this is Campfire. It's uh, part of the Canadian Artists Series Rose, uh, named after uh, Tom Thompson. And a beautiful rose, it's a shrub rose, lots of petals, uh, lots of flowers. We had this one blooming uh, up to, actually past New Year's Day. It's very hardy, it's uh, again developed in Canada. Uh, the beautiful color starts out as uh, yellow and into pink. That's gorgeous. And Floribunda again, I see. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Now these don't all have scents, do they? Uh, not this one, no. It's not uh, highly scented. Okay. Uh, this is another from the Canadian Artist Series, uh, named after Bill Reed, the Haida Gwaii sculptor. Uh, beautiful copper-colored blooms, and uh, it'll be a bush rose. 
and again nice deep dark green leaves very hardy and um, yeah it's a, a bit of a showstopper of a color mm -hmm. well and certainly the the um <coughs> Just the formation of the buds too is quite unique. It's uh, very different than some of these other ones that, that we're seeing today. So, it's, uh, yeah. Now, will that fully open into, yes. uh, into yeah. buds? Yeah. So. Yeah. You can see the uh, oh, fully open there. flowers yeah. here. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Nice. Uh, and we see all your mason bee houses. So I guess the mason bees are busy on there. Uh, they're mostly uh, for the uh, fruit trees. Oh, okay. It's a burgundy iceberg. It's a, a fairly recent rose. It's um, very highly scented. And the intriguing thing about uh, this rose is that uh, um, as the flowers develop, they turn and the petals start curling. And you have almost this uh, star-shaped uh, feature on the rose. Again, it's uh, um, has a wonderful scent, and uh, it will be a bush rose and grow to about four or five feet high. And uh, uh, this is a uh, Zephyrine Druen. It's a what's called a Bourbon rose, uh, developed in France in the 1800s. Uh, it's um, it'll be a climber. It'll come up to the top here, and. Again, it's uh, uh, beautiful pink petals, and it has one of the best scents in the garden. It's uh, highly scented. It's uh, and again, it's uh, yeah a showstopper. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, yes, very aromatic that one. Yes. Yeah, it's about next uh, Hansa. It's one of the most scented roses here. Okay. This is a Giselaine de Felagon. It's uh, developed in France, early 1800s. Uh, beautiful rose, starts off kind of apricot, pinkish apricot, creamy, and then as it uh, develops, the uh, petals uh, turn to a kind of creamy white. Doesn't have much of a scent, but boy, does it produce flowers. And it produces flowers all summer long. Nice. That would be a grand show, definitely. Okay. Uh, this is Kiff Skate. It's a rambling rose. Um, beautiful scent to it. Uh, a little citrusy. This is a little bit light, a little bit citrusy. As you can see, the uh, it just crawls all over the uh, cedar hedge, and these blooms are just on just grow and grow and grow. The only drawback to this one is that it blooms once and then that's it. Hmm. But in the meantime it does put on a fantastic show. Yeah. How long does that last? Uh, oh, several it weeks? It will go for yeah, a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And I see your Salel is enjoying it as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have um, and here and there, blackberry trying to oh, yes, of course. intrude into the party. <laughs> always, always yeah. the blackberry. Nice. Hey, this is Eden. Um, it's a fairly recent rose developed or released in about 2006. It became very popular. It's um, used in a lot of wedding bouquets. Um, doesn't have much of a scent, but as you can see, it does put on a great show. It's a climber. Um, it'll climb over the cage here. And it also blooms throughout the summer. So you're, it's continually putting on a, a show. So it's, um, yeah, a quite an impressive rose. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this is Metabolus. It's another very old, <coughs> old rose. And it's a multicolored. It starts off this kind of orangish um, as a bud, and then it develops into a creamy 
um, uh, flower over its uh, uh, time. This will grow to be about four, five, six feet high, just as wide, full of blooms, and it's a blooms most of the summer, so it's nice. This is Bellaroma. Again, it's a fairly recent rose uh, developed in uh, uh, early 2000. We released in about 2007. The blooms are high centered. They start off yellow and then as they develop, the uh, petals turn pinkish and you have this uh, nice yellow center with uh, a lot of pinkish uh, um, petals around it. It's also one of the more highly scented roses here. Beautiful scent, a little bit citrusy. And uh, so, yeah, you can see here how it's uh, the high centered on the buds here. And it's a climb, climber, um, a tree rose. It'll grow to about eight feet high. And it doesn't need support. It doesn't need it, a trellis. It may. Okay. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And if it does, then uh, we'll just build another uh, trellis. Another <laughs> trellis. There you go. Yeah. This is Chinook Sunrise. It's another Canadian bread rose uh, developed in Niagara Peninsula. And they develop again for Canadian climates. And this is, uh, it doesn't have much of a scent to it, but it's a quite hardy rose. And as you can see, the uh, colors change over the life of the blossom and it's kind of a nice salmon uh, peach color and then it kind of develops into uh, with a little bit of uh, pink in it and when they get really old they just kind of pale and little spots of uh, um, pink and purple on them so this is a red cascade. It's a, a floribunda. You can see here how many uh, buds it has. It's uh, we put it into this flower pot that we bought at a garage sale, and uh, it has a unique shaped flower, small but uh, quite red, quite uh, quite. Uh, yeah, quite different from uh, a lot of the other roses. So it's uh, it'll eventually cascade over. It's uh, uh, kind of a ground cover rose, so it'll cascade over the edges of, uh, of the flower pot here. So that'll be nice. So, and that blooms all summer too. So. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll find out this year. Yeah, so. yeah. It's uh, something we just put in uh, this spring. Mm. So, um, yeah, we've yet to uh, 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 find out. Okay. Well, Roland, thank you to you and Diane for uh, showing us, opening up your lovely home and garden to us and showing us your roses. They're wonderful. And it's not only roses he has in here, so do come and pay a visit because there's all sorts of other little things tucked away here like this wonderful uh, nut tree here and uh, another nut tree back here it's uh, so they've got that and several fig trees but uh, thank you for showing us and uh, well you're enjoy, more than welcome enjoy the roses. And, uh, you know please come back anytime <laughs>